Hello everybody, Rel here, and this time we're storming the castle with Jonathan Brassad's Metroidvania in Existence Rebirth. This game was provided by the developer and the Gaming Outsider podcast for the purposes of this review. Does In Existence Rebirth bring new life to the genre? And should you buy it? In Existence Rebirth has you attempting to rescue your sister who's been encased in crystal by the evil wizard Klaus. To do that, you'll have to make your way across the dangerous wilderness and into his evil castle where he does sinister evil things. Along the way, you'll gain new power-ups that help you traverse the environment and kill things easier. In short, it's a Metroidvania, the kind of game where you explore, find places you can't reach yet, get new power-ups, and then explore those places. The problem is, it's for lack of a better term, basic. You only have a sword as your weapon, so unlike recent Castlevania games, you don't have weapon variety to mix things up. Similarly, you only get a handful of spells, so fighting enemies boils down to either hitting them and dashing away, or sniping them with magic. One thing it does do differently is have you first explore the island in order to find the castle in the first place, rather than simply dropping you in like so many other Castlevania games. While it's nice to get some build up to the evil lair, once you end up getting to the castle, it's not any larger than the island in terms of map size. As a result, while you spend a decent portion of the game getting to the castle, the castle itself practically flies by. Because the map isn't any larger, bosses and new abilities are more frequent, and it feels like you're speedrunning your way to the final battle. Ultimately, In Existence Rebirth feels like a game that has some interesting ideas, but doesn't execute them very well. Enemies and bosses are pretty simplistic, and you have a light amount of customization and drops, but nothing to really write home about. It's a game that doesn't stack up particularly well to others in the same genre. It doesn't help that, at $10 American, you're getting a game that can be cleared in under two hours on a first attempt. As such, even if you're in the market for a new Metroidvania, you're better off waiting for a sale. Be sure to listen to the Gaming Outsider podcast episode 297 to hear me talk more about the game. Thanks so much for watching. Click that like button if you enjoyed this video, then subscribe and click that notification bell to see more in the future. Leave me your comments on the game below and I will see you next time.